This video is based on a new metaheuristic optimization algorithm named as Squirrel Search Optimization Algorithm. We can use this algorithm to solve different optimization problems as this algorithm provides efficient results for different optimization problems including unimodal, multimodal, and multidimensional optimization problems. So we can use this algorithm to solve different optimization problems. As you can see here, SQL search optimization algorithm is introduced in 2018. It is a nature-inspired population-based metaheuristic optimization algorithm that we can use to solve different optimization problems. And this algorithm is basically inspired by the food forging behavior of the flying squirrels in the real life. In this video, we will try to understand this algorithm step by step with mathematical models and random examples. So as you can see here, this algorithm is basically inspired by the food forging behavior of the flying squirrels in the real life. So first we will try to understand the food forcing behavior for the flying scales so that we can easily understand how this algorithm is working. First you can see here flying scales are also known as gliding scales because flying scales do not fly like birds but they glide using a membrane as you can see here. So they do not actually fly but they use a membrane to travel long distance in the forest and here you can see flying squirrel basic body structure they have large dark eyes and you can see their total body length is about 21 centimeter to 26 centimeter and they have bushy cylindrical tail and the tail length is about 3.1 centimeter to 4.7 centimeters and their predators you can see here owl snakes hawks and domestic cats worldwide there are more than 50 species of flying squirrels and their lifespan is about five years and they feed on fruits nuts flowers insects mushroom acorn and hickory nuts. Now we will try to understand the main model that is used in squirrel search optimization algorithm. So here you can see this model is basically inspired by the food pausing behavior of the flying squirrels in the real life. During winter season flying squirrels become less active due to cold weather and they consume only stored food and they especially store acron hickory nuts to consume in the winter season and when winter is over they become again active and they store food for the winter and this process is repeated throughout their lifetime now we will try to understand the flying scales position update process in this algorithm here we will discuss three scenarios and we will update the squirrel's position according to different scenarios. So first scenario you can see here, squirrels on the acron nut trees move toward hickory nut tree. So according to first scenario you can see here we have squirrels on the acron tree and they will move towards hickory tree. That is this one. Because in the warm weather they consume acron nuts and during cold weather they consume hickory nuts so if they are already on the acron tree it means they consume the acron nuts now their daily energy requirement is fulfilled now we will move the squirrels from the acron tree to the hickory tree so this is the first scenario next scenario you can see here squirrels on the normal tree move toward acron nut tree why to fulfill their daily energy needs so here you can see we have squirrels on the normal tree and they will move toward acron tree why to consume acron nuts for their daily energy need 
So in the second scenario we will move the squares from the normal tree to the acron tree. Last scenario you can see here squares on the normal tree move toward hickory nuts tree if they fulfilled their energy needs. Now we have squares on the normal tree and if suppose now suppose if they fulfilled their daily energy need so we will move squares from the normal tree toward hickory nut tree. So we have three scenarios first we are moving the squares from the acron nut tree toward hickory nut tree in the second scenario we are moving the squares from the normal tree towards acron tree and in the third scenario we are moving the squares from the normal tree toward hickory nuts tree. So these three scenarios are modeled in this algorithm and according to different scenarios given here we will update the position for the squares in the search space. Now we will try to understand this algorithm step by step. So first step you can see here that is the algorithm parameter initialization phase. First initialize the population for n number of agents. Here population size is initialized for the squares. After that we will initialize the design variables that is the search space dimension, lower bound, upper bound that is the search space boundary, maximum iteration that is how many times the loop will repeat and after that we have the predator presence probability whether the flying squirrel predator is present or not and if the predator is present we will randomly move the squirrel in the search space. After that you can see here we have the gliding constant. In the next step we will initialize the position for the n squares in the search space using this equation. You can see the lower bound, upper bound and rand is here the normally distributed random value within 0 and 1 and here suppose we have 10 squares so value for i is 1 to 10 and x1 denote the position for the first square x2 that is the position for the second square up to 10 and after that in step 3 they will evaluate the initial population using fitness function so we will use here any objective function to evaluate the initial population in this algorithm fitness function values are used to define the quality of the food sources and after that you can see position is initialized randomly and using cost function we evaluated the fitness values for initial population after that we will rank the individuals from best to worst based on their fitness value so we have three types of trees used in this algorithm hickory trees, acron trees and normal trees. So we will rank individuals from best to worst and the best fitness value is considered as the hickory tree and the second best as the acron and other as the normal trees. So we will rank the individuals from best to worst and we will consider the best solution as the hickory tree, next three best solution as the acron nut trees and rest solution are considered as the normal tree. Suppose we have 10 agents, first agent is the best so this is the hickory nut tree and we have 2 to 4 acron nut trees and 5 to 10 normal trees. Now you can see here we initialize the position for the 10 agents. So using any cost function we evaluated the population. Now we will sort the fitness values in the ascending order and here you can see the best fitness value that is the seventh square that is the hickory nut tree and you can see next three best fitness values as the acron nut trees and the rest 
as the normal trees. So we will rank the scales based on their fitness values. After that we will check the stopping criteria. If it is not met, we will repeat the loop else. We will display the best solution that is obtained in the previous iteration. In step 6, we will calculate the new position for the flying squirrels. So here we will apply the gliding process for the flying squirrels. So we have three scenarios that we already discussed here. So we will update the agent's position based on three scenarios. First, we will update the location for the squirrels on the acron tree and they will move toward hickory nut tree. That is the first scenario. So using this equation, we will update the new position for the flying squirrel at the acron tree. So here you can see this is the flying squirrel at hickory tree. It means it is the best solution. That is the optimal solution and we will update the other squirrel's position around best solution. So here you can see this is the older position for the flying squirrel at the acron tree and this is the gliding distance and here this is the gliding constant and here you can see this is the best solution that is the flying squirrel at the hickory tree and this is the flying squirrel at the acron tree so first you will check the predator presence probability. If the predator is present, we will move the flying squirrel randomly else using this equation. So here R1 is any random value that is normally distributed. So using this equation, we will update the position for the flying squirrels for the first scenario. Next you can see here we have N1 that is the flying squirrels on the acron tree. So for 1 to N1 that is the number of flying squirrels on the acron tree. Acron tree. So here we will check the predator presence probability. If it is true then we will update using this else we will update randomly. Next you can see for N2 that is the flying scales on the normal tree and they move toward acron tree. So for 1 to N2 we will again check the predator presence. If this condition is true we will update using this equation else randomly. So this is the mathematical model used to update flying scales position for second scenario. So here you can see flying scales are on the normal tree and they are moving toward acron tree here here you can see the new position for the flying scales on the normal tree is calculated first we will check the predator presence and here this is again the random value that is normally distributed and here you can see the flying scale at acron tree and this is the flying squirrel at the normal tree. For second scenario, if this condition is true, we will update using this equation else randomly. For the third scenario, you can see here flying scales are on the normal tree and they are moving toward the hickory nut tree. So you can see this is the best solution and this is the older position. And again, we will check the predator presence. And accordingly, we will update their position. So here you can see for third scenario, we will check the predator presence. If condition is true, update as randomly. Next, we will calculate the seasonal constant. As we know that squirrel search algorithm mimic the food searching behavior of flying squirrels in the real life. But this behavior is affected by the seasons as we have different seasons and they affect the flying scales food forcing behavior and this behavior and this is also used to prevent algorithm to stuck in the local optima and here we will calculate the seasonal constant and the minimum value you can see here this is the 
flying scale on acron tree and this is the flying scale on the hickory nut tree so we will check this condition if this condition is true it means now winter is over and when the winter is over we will randomly locate the flying scales in the search space using the Levis flight you can see here this is the you can see here this is the Levis flight so using this we can calculate the random position for the flying scale after that we will calculate the fitness values for new solution and then we will increment the counter and we will check the stopping criteria here if the stopping criteria is met we will display the best solution that is found in the previous iteration else we will repeat the loop here until the stopping criteria is met and once the stopping criteria is met stop and display the best solution that is found in the previous iteration so that's all about this video if you have any questions you can comment below and thanks